Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick right now. Aspen Gold Bedroom. Walking around your pigsty saying, I'm Pickle Rick. So sick. This is good. He's redeemed. Throughout the years, there's been many OG gaming YouTubers that we've probably watched when we were younger. In this video, I talk about all kinds of OG gaming YouTubers from Minecraft channels, old Let's Play channels, popular Call of Duty channels, and some of those popular channels that many of us used to watch. I'm going to cover some of their rises and downfalls, as well as what happened to each of these YouTubers, such as Sky is Minecraft, popular MMOs, FaZe Clan, Corey X Kenshin, Vanoss Gaming, and more. I tried making this video similar to some of my recent longer uploads, so hopefully you all enjoy that. Now, I don't think he's going to get mentioned here, but the guy that I used to watch the most in terms of gaming YouTubers, was Captain Sparkles. I watched Captain Sparkles and Markiplier were probably the two I watched the most back in the day. Markiplier less, I mostly just watched him for his um, FNAF videos, which I did like, but, uh, and that's how I found out about FNAF in the first place and started playing it with my friends. But uh, the old, the old Hunger Games survival videos were amazing, dude. This is, this is just such a great series, dude. It'll never, it'll, I, I, I don't, you know, no, no shade to Captain Sparkles, but I'd imagine it'd be hard to, to live that wave up, you know, to get back to that point. I live in a third world country and I have autism. Well, that's just called living in a third world country in my opinion. Before we had Mr. Beast, fake Minecraft challenges, and actual brain rot, most of us have probably spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours watching our favorite gaming content creators back in the day, with some of them who actually turned into some of the most successful creators on the platform, and then others who, uh, things didn't turn out so well for them. So I decided to go back and find out what happened to some of these OG gaming creators. Starting off strong, we have Minecraft YouTubers, and a lot of them did not age too well. Popular MMOs was a channel that consisted of Pat and Jen, a wife and husband duo who made some pretty fire minecraft mod reviews at the time they were actually one of the top youtubers with i did a video about them with a uh, toastify where we went pretty in depth on them popular mmos i mean essentially i don't remember him doing anything specifically super super evil i think he just had a really crazy relationship with this one woman and i think they ended up hitting each other at some point it wasn't like he was just beating the f out of her i think they ended up hitting each other and they had like a really crazy downfall relationship and it ended up really torching his whole 17 don't ever make a joint channel with your significant other. I feel like it's a recipe for disaster. I mean, the thing is, it's not necessarily a recipe for disaster, but it really can be a lot of the time because, you know, a lot of people who make a channel with their significant other, if it's not their wife and they haven't been married for like five years at that point, if they're in the beginning of the relationship, things can always get rocky, especially when you're young, right? Things can get really, really rocky. And most relationships when you're young, like when you're in your like, you know, late teens to early 20s, most of the relationships you have are probably not going to last that long. They're probably not, they're probably gonna, you know, they're probably gonna split, you're probably gonna break up for whatever reason. And, you know, ultimately what can happen there is if you break up, whoever's in the wrong is just gonna get relentlessly shit on because the audience is parasocially attached to that relationship. Whoever's in the right will ultimately not suffer that much in the short term, but in the long term they will. Because if the audience is built off of the existence of that relationship, you're not gonna be able to recapture that, you know? Like sometimes it can work out, but for every relationship on YouTube that does work out, doesn't fall apart, there's always another example of a relationship that does just completely get torched online. And you know, sometimes one person will be less professional than the other and they'll publicize all the crazy shit that happened in the relationship or they'll make it seem like shit that wasn't even that crazy was actually insane and try to hurt the other person because it's like, you know, you're in a relationship, you guys split up and let's say the more popular content creator can still go on making content, but the other person can't. So they're like, well, how do I get back at this person? Well, torch their career, right? Did you enjoy watching Vanos? I never was a Vanos viewer, to be honest, ever. Never really my thing. 15 million subs and almost 15 billion channel views. I mean, everything from their skins, the map they played in, and even their intro was so iconic. I see it all the time today, and people just loved their videos at the time because they were actual flames. But in reality, things were not going too good behind the scenes. At some point, they released a video on their channel announcing that they had gotten a divorce. <laughs> the intro we decided to break up it's kind of funny how smoothly and unserious they were about it considering the situation what's up dudes it's pat and welcome back to another video hey guys. but unfortunately things took a turn for the worse pat eventually well to be fair if they were really serious about it and all sad they probably would have like caused a lot of speculation around the relationship and caused it to get really worse you know cause people to speculate on it i feel like it's better to have like a more professional like oh we're just going our separate ways type thing like obviously david dobrik got in a lot of shit but i think his relationship with is it liza koshi is that who it was whoever she was their relationship breakup video was like ultimately the best way to go about it 
you know, for the kind of content they were doing. And they didn't end up, I don't think either of them ended up getting a lot of shit online for it. I could be wrong, but I don't think it was like, was like a breakup that resulted in like some kind of tumultuous thing at the time. He met his next girlfriend, Elaney, and it was kind of weird because sometimes both him, his new girlfriend, and his divorced wife, Jen, would all make videos together. And it's such a bad idea. You can't replace her, bro. You can't replace her in the content. You can't do it. You can't try to swap out your wife your ex-wife for a new girl and she's gonna be nuts because of it dude she's gonna be nuts she's gonna always feel like she's like just playing second fiddle to the audience you know all the comments which she will read are gonna be like man i miss the old girl she was better oh this new girl's fine but yeah you'll never we'll, we'll never get over the old era where jen was on it minecraft jen yeah man not uh not looking good for the public relationship allegations here. It seemed like they were actually having a pretty good time. But not long after, Pat and his new girlfriend got into some public beef about financial issues and other things. Just saying slavery has been illegal for many years. She literally called me like a slave owner at this point. After some back Based. and forth, he finally got with his next girlfriend and somehow things got way worse. I don't even know how that's possible. One time they got arrested and the records mentioned that a naked woman was banging outside the door. Another Let's time go. he got arrested after she said he was allegedly hitting her arm while drunk in a car he apparently slept outside while she locked the doors because she felt unsafe and when she finally came out the house he went and chased her around the street with a knife that he used to slash the tires off the car the next time he got arrested was in late 2022 where him and his friends attempted to run shirtless across a football field during I a game this. while they were oiled up so that way they could not get tackled easily that's awesome loki was kind of genius he that's fucking base dude this is sick you guys remember, uh, I think it was FusiTube, he streaked the World Cup, the biggest soccer event of the year. He did it with Vitaly. FusiTube World Cup. Was it not the World Cup? What was it? I don't remember what it actually was. He ran out. Was it, was it Vitaly? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. It's about to happen. I'm about to go in the middle of the field. World Cup finals. Germany, Argentina. Oh, there he is. He wasn't even really naked though, he just pulled a shirt up. Sixteen million views, by the way. Dude. Why would you not film him running into the field? True. Fusi really fucked up filming on this video. I didn't even capture Vitaly running onto the pitch from the sideline. Destroyed, dude. Sixteen million views though. That's all it took back in the day, man. That's literally all it took. He himself wasn't successful in this, but his friend was, so they ended up all getting arrested. During this time, he was also going through several accusations of being an abuser by his girlfriend. Things only got worse from here when his wife, Jen, had liked the tweet claiming that Pat was an abuser. She Damn. actually backtracked on this and said that it was an accident. I did not use Twitter regularly, and when I was messaged about all this drama, I went on to see what was being said. By accident, I liked a tweet that is now being seen in a poor manner. Pat never in the 10 years we were together laid a hand on me. Well, that's a kind of a fatal mistake, dude. It's kind of a fatal mistake. This is like, uh, people really read into this shit, especially if you actually publicly agree with it. Like what happened with Gus Johnson and his crazy ex, Abelina Sabrina. Very dark, bro. Very, very dark. Accident, and she actually went out of her way to defend Pat, saying that she had never faced any kind of physical abuse from him. Fast forward to now, his ex-wife Jen from the channel actually has a kid with another guy, and apparently the both of them are still on pretty good terms, and despite the controversies, it seems like they're actually doing pretty good right now. Okay, maybe not. He just got arrested like six months ago for uh, possession of some of the devil's lettuce, and from what I've seen, it's not looking too good for him at the moment. Unfor well, I mean, that's kind of whatever, though. Who cares that he had a little weed? I mean, I'm not a pro-weed guy, but... You know, who really cares that he did that? Is he uploading right now? Popular MMOs. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like he's uploaded for a while. Last video was, will Jen be coming back? He posted a video about him going to jail. Man, typically not a good idea. Obviously, he was explaining himself here, but typically not a good idea. How many views is he getting at his peak? Holy shit, 58 million views on a Minecraft Let's Play? More TNT mods? Bruh. That is absolute insanity. I don't know if he made a, he probably made a bunch of money off of this, but ad rates were lower eight years ago, nine years ago, so it might not have been as crazy as you would think. But he definitely still at least made a few million. God damn. Fortunately for Skyda's Minecraft, it did not end up so well for him. Skyda's Minecraft, also known as Adam, was yet another huge... Man, Sky just lost his fucking mind, bro. Too many of these guys. I feel like looking back at the old Minecraft scene is like looking at... Uh, it's like looking at the grunge scene from like... You know, the 90s with like Alice in Chains. You know, Alice in Chains singer, Lane Staley, dead. Kurt Cobain, dead. Singer of Stone Temple Pilots, dead. Um... Chris Cornell from Soundgarden and Audio Slave dead. They're all just dead, man. But looking at the old Minecraft guys, it's like half of them like went or like mentally ill, and then half of them like 
just touch kids or something. <laughs> Usually popular creator at the time who blew up from posting mod reviews as well. This dude was my childhood idol, but holy smokes, if only I knew that he would be making some not so good decisions later in life. I literally had action figures of him as a kid. People didn't only just watch him, but they watched his entire crew called Team Crafted, which ended up falling the goats. apart. On top of that, behind the scenes, he had gone through not just one, but two divorces with different people and the second girl named Elisa, he actually had a kid with her. Bad move. The Minecraft video Video slowed down, but at some point he rebranded himself as the new rapper alias Net Nobody. This is when he was doing diss tracks on KSI, and there was that video where KSI brought over um KSI had his ex-wife in a video. That was just dude an insane diss track era. KSI definitely won that publicly. But I remember there was this really fucking sad video of Sky on um this guy was on Drama Alert. He was like, I just want to see my son. That was like one of the most heartbreaking videos of all time. That was super, super dark, man. I have this theory. Well, this isn't even just a theory. This is partially confirmed, I would say. You know, it's hard to say what the exact psychology is, but definitely with a lot of YouTubers, I think that when they get big, they just get mentally stunted because they have all this money and they no longer need to grow as a person because they're just implicitly validated for playing video games online. And their mental maturity starts to stunt. They don't grow as a person. And so as a result, they latch onto a lot of quote unquote problematic or toxic personal behavior. And they think that because it's not publicly destroyed them at the time it's not hurting their career they're going to be just fine long term but realistically it's not it's not fine and eventually it will probably become a problem if you don't fix it you know and try to grow as a person these these maladaptive behaviors will become part of your public persona and in this case like this is what most people remember scott as minecraft for a lot of people who know sky don't remember him as the big guy on on minecraft the guy that was like, that like almost passed PewDiePie at some point instead they see him as you know the guy that was really successful at one point caveat he went nuts right that's always it Acting like you run and rap and you slur on every track. Now this dude came straight without Sky wouldn't have Post Malone. Yeah, Post Malone used to hang out with the whole team crafted scene. Post Malone has connections to a lot of YouTubers. Like he was on the H3 podcast a bunch back in the day, even after he had blown up, but he was on there. Um, I think he knew Joji too, and I think they've posted pictures not even that long ago where they were buddies. Maybe I'm like Berenstein bearing that where I, that didn't actually happen. Maybe that's butterfly. What is it called? Mandela effect. Maybe it didn't actually happen, but yeah, dude into the rap scene with some bangers directed to none other than KSI and KSI responded back with this tracks featuring his ex-wife audio save and Soundgarden same guy that is what I said Chris Cornell thank you very much whatever your name is I can't even read it swy 88 why that is what I said slash baby mama who had taken custody of his own child this event was so bad that it made Keemstar get emotional Sky kept focusing on his music career but unfortunately for him it never really caught on so he was definitely going through it I'm pickle Rick this is the most fire video. This is so good. I'm Pickle Rick. There was this one DM between him and his ex-wife where she was like mad at him and he was he just like he was just like soft day n-word, just like nothing else. He was just like n-word. It was fucking crazy, dude. I'm Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick. I'm pickle Rick right now. Asin Gold Bedroom. Walking around your pigsty saying I'm Pickle Rick. So sick. This is good. He's redeemed. Afterwards, he eventually got with his new girlfriend and had his second kid with her, but things wouldn't last too long because at some point, she would claim that Skyda's Minecraft was abusing her, their dogs, pushed her to have a child that she didn't want, and it also came out that apparently this dude was a master scammer. It's actually kind of sad that I can barely think of any Minecraft YouTubers who weren't horrible people or criminals and stuff. You can definitely think of them. Stampy, nothing bad happened to him. Captain Sparkles, nothing happened to him. Beijing Canadian, nothing really bad happened to him. Uh, majority of Team Crafted outside of like, you know, I guess Chin Bob wasn't really in Team Crafted, so not him, but like outside of really Sky, most of them were fine. Like most, most of the Minecraft YouTubers are totally fine, dude. And they just like, you just don't hear about them anymore. You don't remember them because they blew up and they had their heyday and then they kind of died down like deadlocks or, um, you know, people like that. But there's this misconception that like every Minecraft YouTuber is a, you know, all the OG Minecraft YouTubers are, YouTubers are and it's not the case. Scott is Minecraft. I don't think ever even had an allegation of that caliber. Um, obviously he had like a different kind of downfall thing, but you know, it's more just like the ones that are really fucked up stick out in your mind and you don't remember the other ones. The majority of Minecraft YouTubers did not actually do anything wrong. They're totally fine, man. It's not even like 10% of them. You just remember the like five to 10 cases out of the hundreds of Minecraft YouTubers.
some way. Dan TDM is actually one of those not so horrible people who I'm sure y'all are familiar with. Hey, how's it going? I've actually got something for you. This is the bread that you asked me to get, and you can now go make me a sandwich. Face. He's not as relevant as he used to be, but going back and looking at his channel, he's still surprisingly been able to pull millions of views on each video and somehow has not gotten into any drama this entire time, until recently at least, because he just got into some gigantic beef with KSI, Mr. Beast, and Logan Paul over their knee. But I'm pretty sure, um, in the case of Dan TDM, he managed to like break out of his uh break out of the Minecraft mode where he can do other stuff now. Like obviously he does Minecraft stuff, but like Would You Rather has a bunch of views. YouTube has games now has a bunch of views. He he's done other games like Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, FNAF here they got a bunch of views. Another FNAF video, Lego Fortnite. Like he still gets views on stuff that isn't necessarily Minecraft because he slowly transitioned out of that content and managed to maintain his audience. So it became more about him and what he had to say and his reactions to games and his jokes rather than just, you know, whether or not he's playing Minecraft that day. And he can still do Minecraft stuff when he wants to, but he's not trapped by it, which is definitely the way to go. Definitely the way to go. You want to slowly be able to transition out of that. So you're not you're not trapped. You're not audience captured by that same thing. New lunchly product. Outside of that, though, his record is pretty clean. He hasn't touched any little kids yet or anything. So uh, he's doing pretty good. He actually just started a new channel where he uploaded some like nostalgic video that was like a reboot of his old Minecraft mod review videos. There was also Stampy Longhead, who isn't as relevant as he used to be. But he doesn't help that some of the crazy ones like Futuristic Hub ruin the game's image. I mean, he doesn't ruin the game's image. That's... He definitely... I guess he heard it a little bit, but not really. The thing is, when anything is so popular, like Minecraft is such a ubiquitously popular game with so many people, it's like chess, right? It's like the idea that all the old chess players got outed for being creeps. It's like, well, no, you just remember the ones that did. And it's the same exact thing with the Minecraft guys. Minecraft is just so ubiquitously popular. Everybody was blowing up off Minecraft because it was so popular. You're going to have some people that fucked up, right? You're going to have the crazy people like Futuristic Hub who make like Minecraft <laughs> videos. But that's not the majority of them, right? They don't really ruin the image. Maybe to you, because you're not really a real Minecraft player. You're just a guy who watches YouTube commentary videos about Minecraft stuff. So in your mind, the guys, you know, in your mind, all the old Minecraft tubers are, uh, you know, all freaks because you're watching the negative content posted about them. But there's so many people who are totally fine. You know, it's a minority of, of fucked up freaks for sure. He also managed to avoid pretty much any drama. Preston Plays was also a pretty big Minecraft YouTuber back then, and now he's like one of the top YouTubers in the platform right now. But yeah, it does suck that a lot of these Minecraft YouTubers couldn't go out with happy endings. I never watched Preston Plays. Was he a kid when he blew up? Preston Plays. What kind of content does he do? Oh, he still does Minecraft stuff now and then. But his most popular video, I mean, his most popular one by exact metrics is obviously Minecraft. But Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, 50 million views two years ago? Good for him. I assume this is the kind of content that's not really made for me, if I had to guess. These are the scariest Minecraft theories you've never heard of, starting with a myth sent in by Batkid on Discord who says, I always wondered what happened to the Far Lands at night. No one talks about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just content made for kids, you know. Whatever. But good for him for blowing up and continuing to succeed. Since the very beginning of gaming content on YouTube, Let's Play videos have been the foundation for some of the biggest channels that we have ever seen on YouTube. PewDiePie, of course, was one of these YouTubers, and as y'all know, he was the most subscribed channel for the majority of YouTube's lifespan, up until a certain point at least. He began posting videos back in 2010, and within three years, he had already become the most subscribed YouTuber. Loki, I could probably do the same, so if y'all want to help support the cause, feel free to drop us up. He was posting Let's Plays, vlogs, meme reviews, he even made his own games. For a while, it was going pretty chill but at some point it took a pretty bad turn his first major controversy was in 2017 where he faced some backlash after include i mean i feel like bad turn is a bad way to phrase this because i mean obviously there was controversy but the only people who hated him were like journalists and like online pretty much everybody on the internet still supported him pretty much every single like i i don't remember almost any youtuber back in the day it was like pewdiepie fell off i hate him he's racist now you know pewdiepie was very impressive with the fact that he managed to transition from like five different kinds of content like he started off doing you know let's plays for basically children where he was screaming at the top of his lungs he managed to transition that from the horror games into more general gaming content he transitioned that into like when 2015 2016 edgy filthy frank stuff was happening he did that he transitioned that into commentary videos for a few years meme reviews he transitioned from that back into gaming when the minecraft blew up again like he he's I think it's really impressive how he never really fell off. People say he fell off now, but it was like of his own volition. It was of his own choice. He just wanted to slow down with the content he was making and, you know, raise his son, which is really respectable to change your priorities once you get to around 30 years old. And also, he still makes content and does well and has a pretty loyal fan base that watches him, you know? Like, obviously, it's not reflective of his... I mean, he has 110 million subscribers. 
you know, he's getting 2.2 million views. That ratio is, you know, bad on paper, but like <laughs> still he's getting millions and millions of views on most of his videos. He kind of posts whenever he wants. He still got an audience that loves him for who he is. He had a really cool arc. I, I like PewDiePie quite a bit. I think he's one of um he's one of the more based tubers ever, in my opinion. Including anti-Semitic jokes in his videos, which caused him to lose Base. his partnership with both YouTube Red and Disney, which I can only imagine was not very good for him. It only got worse from there though, because within the same year, we had the bridge incident. What a fucking now because of those controversies there's still some people who aren't rocking with him today but even now he still has a pretty solid fan base in 2018 however things got crazy with the subscribe to pewdiepie campaign the indian music record label channel known as t-series was on a very quick rise and people man that was such a fun era of youtube that was like the last holdout i feel like for the non-corporate youtubers that was the last holdout when people were like racing to make sure that PewDiePie still had more subscribers than this fucking like Indian conglomerate channel, you know? That was the last the last beacon of hope for independent YouTubers. And now, obviously I don't really have a lot of ill will about it. YouTube's changed. I'm not really salty about the fact that it's become more corporate. It was gonna happen. It is what it is. You're gonna have more people on YouTube who are running their shit like a whole company and have all these employees and contractors and are making content for the widest audience possible. You know, like Mr. Beast, right? But the ironic thing about this is that back in the day, PewDiePie was just one guy with like two or three editors maybe who was like still representative of that old YouTube thing. And Mr. Beast, who had like a whole team behind him and was trying to be the biggest guy in the world, he was one of the guys that was supporting the subscribe to PewDiePie movement most of all. He bought billboards and put subscribe to PewDiePie on it. I think he bought a blimp and put it on it. He was pushing that movement the most. But eventually Mr. Beast would go on to become the most subscribed YouTuber of all time. And he is like, I'd say in a way more similar to T-Series than he is to PewDiePie because he is like a whole conglomerate. It's content made to be the most appealing content possible. It's like, you know, kind of soy. It's not really made for me, honestly. Um, and he ended up passing T-Series, I believe. He became, you know, the biggest YouTube channel of all time. People started realizing that PewDiePie Spy is the number one most subscribed YouTube channel had became at risk. Millions of people and YouTubers from all around the world came together to support so that they wouldn't let a corporate company like T-Series take over an actual real creator. PewDiePie had released his T-Series diss track. People were Bitch lasagna. PewDiePie everywhere. Even Mr. Beast made a video about promoting PewDiePie to the Super Bowl. He was going crazy in subs because of this, but unfortunately, in March of 2019, there was a tragic event that happened where the person who caused it had recorded himself saying subscribe to PewDiePie before following through with what he was about to do. After this happened, PewDiePie released a statement on his channel officially bringing an end to the subscribe to PewDiePie meme. And within the same month, T-Series had officially taken over the number one spot for the most subscribed YouTube channel. Since then, PewDiePie has still been up. I remember back then there was a bunch of these videos coming from like, um, I don't even remember the names of their channels. But there were a bunch of these like lefty YouTube channels that were making videos about how PewDiePie was partially responsible for this shooting happening because of stochastic terrorism. And because he made jokes about Indian people in his videos and he said the N-word, he was partially responsible for this guy who went out and killed like 50 Muslims. That was insane. That was Vosh. Yeah, Vosh probably said that. I barely remember if he did, but it wouldn't surprise me. But that was like a whole a whole arc and narrative on YouTube from crazy people was basically that PewDiePie was somehow responsible for this shooting happening, which is completely and none of these people will be comfortable with that same blame being ascribed to them if somebody in their audience had gone out and done something crazy because the real thing here is that like pewdiepie was so popular like the idea that pewdiepie is responsible for the shooting when he has 100 million subscribers and somebody says subscribe to pewdiepie that's like saying that like michael jackson is responsible for a mass shooting happening because the person said hee hee like, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. PewDiePie has 100 million people following him. It's statistically possible that some of those people are going to go to go to jail or be caught doing something evil, right? It's fucking shit. Have you watched the CoffeeZilla response to the Mr. Beast interview on the crypto scam? I know it's out there. I haven't seen it yet. I watched like half of it, but I'm going to be um, making a video about that. So I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to be going over more Mr. Beast drama on stream. I think that's going to stay on the Tom Dark channel for now, unless there's like some crazy thing. I've kind of milked it dry over here. I'm not really going to be doing that anymore. You know, I'm kind of, I'm just sick of covering it live. I'll cover it in pre-planned videos that are more well-constructed. But after watching that entire Mr. Beast thing live, uh, the entire interview with him, I'm kind of gassed out from doing it here. Shredded Nerd says the same guy blames Spyro 3 for making his him comment the shooting in his own manifesto. Wait, what? Really? Spyro 3, a children's video game? Yeah, this is how stupid these fucking people are, man. That's not surprising.
uploading videos on a sad note his dog maya that people loved in his videos passed away last year but on the bright side him and his wife actually just had a kid low-key though that kid should take over the channel one day and then like reclaim the number one spot on youtube there were also some other huge let's play channels at the time like jacksepticeye markiplier and dashi who are still pretty relevant to this day which is a nice sight to see Corey kenshin was another one of them who has been mysteriously on and off of youtube for a while now there's a lot of people who speculate about where he is with some people actually being obsessive about him and literally still Stalking him, so he probably just made a bunch of money and decided he didn't want to make YouTube videos unless he really wants to. Like realistically speaking, you know, it's it's <laughs> if you make like twenty million dollars on YouTube off of making content about Five Nights at Freddy's, eventually you might just not be that interested in it, right? Especially if you do it over the course of five six years, you might get bored of it. Is it that hard to understand? Really? Is it that impossible to to understand? <laughs> Oh, you made $20 million. You don't have to play FNAF anymore. Why wouldn't he do it? Why wouldn't he play Five Nights at Freddy's every day? It's like, well, he made it. He doesn't have to. He'll just fuck off. Please message to y'all. Do not stalk any of your favorite YouTubers. Outside of Let's Plays, there were also a lot of creators who were at the top of the game at one point. Some of them were completely forgotten. Some had their lives completely ruined. And some actually ended up being some of the most successful creators we have ever seen. Tabuscus, also known as Toby Turner, is the embodiment of OG gaming YouTube. The GOAT! For some reason, Tabuscus follows 12 people on Twitter, and I am one of them, and I do not know why. Who else does he follow? Jax Films, Rhett from Rhett and Link, Elon Musk, whoever this is, some kind of MILF uh, Republican account, I guess. Rockstar Games, Gon's Awesome, who does animations. I think they did the animations for his music videos back in the day. Whoever this is, some Bitcoin account. J.K. Rowling, Ricky Berwick, Justin Wang and me i mean i'm in the top 12 for some reason i do not know why i made it i don't i do not know why i'm in here in this in this moment probably because you're one of the few people that likes toby i mean i don't love him but i just don't hate him i don't incessantly hate him because the the allegations from back in the day like there was no definitive proof for it so i'm not going to just say fuck him forever you know Toby had over 6 million subscribers on one channel, a light 1.7 million subs on his second channel, and then another 6 million on his Let's Play channel. He was going crazy on the Let's Plays at the time, but he also had these hugely popular parody songs with these animations that were pretty cool. Now, the reach that this dude had on people was actually wild. He was collabing with every YouTuber known to man. Kids all over the place was rocking his merch, buying his action figures, and he was pretty much just the go at one point. It seemed like everything was going perfect, but at some point, it took a pretty dark Turn. Toby's ex girlfriend had exposed him back in 2016 and accused him of all kinds of things like SA, abuse, and some other pretty crazy actions. Even some other people pitched in and talked about his alleged toxic behavior. But to this day, nothing has been 100% confirmed and no one knows for sure what actually happened. By then, though, it was already far too late. The situation was being covered all over the place and his channel quickly started to fall off. Even I feel like the reason he fell off was not because of the allegations, though. Like, not directly anyway. I feel like he fell off because he quote unquote fell off because he got accused of this shit. Mentally, he probably wasn't doing that well. In the past, he seemed to have some serious drug problems and partying problems. And this just exasperated it. But unironically, if he continued making content and like try to evolve on the YouTube platform, he probably could have been fine long term. He just, he wasn't really posting like he, he used to, you know? He wasn't posting that consistently. And after trying to defend himself and denying the claims, fast forward to today, he's actually very active on his channels, but he's not even getting a fraction of the views that he once was. His well, why would he if he's making a video about a hurricane or he's making like the ironic transphobia song? Like that's not really what people remember him for, you know? They, 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 he was a kid's content creator. He made a nugget and a biscuit, you know? That's not really what the audience wants to see. But I, I kind of like Tabuscus. His videos now seem like oddly stuck in the 2010s, and apparently he's gotten himself into a bit of politics now. On January 16th, the world is so soft, being toxic isn't a cancelable offense. The problem is, like, when you build up um, an audience who perceives you as one kind of way, uh, who perceives you as, like, a good guy, kids content creator, friendly, nice guy, but then they find out that you uh, yelled at a girl once, they have a fucking mental breakdown about it. It drives them fucking nuts. That's the problem with that. You know, you build yourself up off of this one image. And even when, like, obviously it's unrealistic for the audience to expect you to be a perfect person behind the scenes, when they find that out, they're like, it's the downfall. And a lot of people don't handle that well, you know? A lot of people mentally don't handle it well when the audience feels like they've been betrayed and they actually haven't been, but they're just so parasocial. They expect you to be someone you're not, right? Even if that's how you've been all the time, you know? It's a very, it's a very uh, difficult thing to deal with. 
ultimately I feel like the best solution is just to push through it and keep making content and it will speak for itself. But yeah, that's a big thing. A lot of people on YouTube can't really handle like being disliked at any point in time, even if it's a short amount of time, they have a hard time dealing with it, bro. 2013 four siblings came together and created a brand new youtube channel known as venturian tale which had a pretty devastating downfall within only six months of this channel being created they were already averaging 2 million views per day or 60 million views a month which is crazy at the time and even by today's standards that's still pretty crazy at the start of the channel they were just recording themselves playing these games especially gmod at some point with very little to no editing at all this and their personalities was enough to catch people's attention at the time but when you're you're making the same videos a decade oh later people are eventually going to lose interest and this is exactly what happened to them somehow the main guy running the channel just couldn't realize why people were losing interest in his videos so he decided to blame none other than the youtube algorithm for his videos uh, this is always the biggest cope though. There's very, very limited cases where this is real. Like very few people get banned on YouTube and it sucks if you get banned obviously and very, very like I, I doubt there's many cases of actual shadow banning most of the time somebody's channel starts falling off and they can't find it within themselves to recognize that their content needs to change or it wasn't that good in the first place and they kind of got, you know, in a sense, lucky. Like there is a sense of luck on YouTube for sure where sometimes you'll get big off of one trend and if you don't break from that trend, you'll die. Your channel will fucking die. There is an, like an aspect of right time, right place that you can benefit from and you need to be able to escape that and not just exist based on that one kind of content because if you don't, you're fucked. You're fucked, dude. You're it's going to be really bad for you. 100K per video after 10 years is still respectable. Yeah, for sure. But the thing is, like, it really hurts you inside, you know? Like, imagine you you come to, ex like, okay, obviously this sounds like, you know, it sounds um, unrelatable for the average person. But let's say you get big on YouTube, right, off of one kind of content. You're consistently making, like, $50,000 a month. And you're like, well, what the fuck? People's minds really adjust to that really quickly. They'll buy like a really expensive house. They'll buy expensive cars. They'll have all these bills. They'll live like a really fun, crazy lifestyle of partying or whatever. And then they start falling off and they get to the point where they're making like 8K a month. 8K a month is still really great, you know, before they came to, uh, you know, expect making 50 grand or 100 grand a month or whatever it is. 8K is something is the amount of money that they would have someone for people in the hood do people over like $500, right? They do it. But when you adjust to a certain expectation and you adjust your lifestyle and you spend a lot of that money, you're going to adjust your, your brain's expectations for life. And it's going to be a really hard thing to accept, which is why I think generally the way to do it is if you make money on YouTube at any point in time, you know, you can, you can adjust your lifestyle a little bit. If you used to live in a shitty apartment or live with your parents, you can get a nicer apartment. You can get a nice house, you know, you can get like a better car, but I don't think it's good to like, as soon as you blow up on YouTube, you don't want to assume that it's going to go on forever and then just go buy like a fucking buy like a Lamborghini, right? Buy a mansion. Cause that money might not last forever. It might not. And then you're going to be fucked not only financially, cause you can't pay for these things anymore, but also your expectations about who you are are going to be fucked. You're going to tie your identity to the money you're making and the things you own. Like, um, someone who did it really well actually was Jinxie, right? Jinxie made a bunch of money on YouTube and then he bought a car and the car he bought was not a Lamborghini. It was not a Ferrari. It was a fucking Honda or no, it was a Honda Accord. Yeah, it was like a Honda Accord in like a nice trim, which is a nice car. It's a totally fine car, but it's not the car you would expect somebody who made like $5 million in a year off YouTube to buy. But he bought it probably, I assume, because he has a little bit of, you know, he's kind of smart and he has it in his mind that he doesn't want to attach his identity to buying a really nice car. And he knows that the money might not last forever. You know, you don't want to just blow all your money on stupid shit. It's not good. You want to slowly figure out how to make more and more money and slowly, very slowly adjust your expectations rather than doing it all at once. You know, it's the same phenomenon with YouTubers or sorry, it's the same phenomenon with you, with football players, football players who are broke, right? They come from a shitty area. They get in the NFL, they get a contract for $5 million and they blow it in three years because they assume it'll just last forever. It's the same exact thing with, um, with, uh, with lottery winners, right? They have no money. They make a bunch of money. They get a bunch of money from the lottery and they just start blowing it all. They don't know how to handle it, bro. I would have bought a Porsche 911. Well, in fairness, I think Jinxie did buy one of those, but he bought it for his dad. It was a gift to his dad. Why are people saying F? Refresh the page. My thing says excellent connection. So are you kidding me, dude? Refresh the page. And don't a single one of you tell me that I have bad Wi-Fi. It's YouTube. Anyhow, yeah. Basically, the life lesson here is, you know, it doesn't even just apply to uh, to YouTube. It just applies to any any situation. If you make a bunch of money really quickly, save it. 
Save it. Don't adjust your expectations. Just save it. Put it in the bank. Save it for a rainy day when you actually need it. He's being kind of ass. I mean, he's having to compete with Mr. Beast and all these other crazy high production videos. So obviously, it's not going to do as well. The siblings on the channel would start to wander off and do their own thing. One of them apparently started selling stuff on Amazon, and another started working on her own app. Things took a pretty dark turn though. Whenever the same sibling from this channel uploaded a video on her own channel titled "The Truth About Venturian Tale," in this video she talks about how she grew up in a very strict house where certain ideologies were being forced onto them one of the other sisters on the channel first started to question them and because of that she had to cut ties from the rest of the family the sister who made the video was thinking the same thing and ultimately the same thing happened to her where they basically got ghosted from the rest of the family the brothers on the channel might not have anything to do with that but either way it's still pretty messed up and it definitely did cause part of the downfall for the channel so next up we got phase clan phase began as a call of duty clan back in 2010 for people who could do trick shots inside of the game little did people people know this group would help make gaming as mainstream as it is today back then if you were someone who played call of duty as a kid or a teenager there was almost a 100 percent chance that you wanted to join the phase clan as <laughs> there were also a lot of memes back in the day like at first it was i'm leaving buzzfeed or why i left buzzfeed was the meme and then it was why i left phase clan why i got kicked out of phase clan that shit i never was a huge phase clan viewer i do like um i kind of like phase banks i do like i do like some of his stuff um just because he seems funny and he also managed to like I know he had like a whole mental downward spiral where I think he, he had some drug problems. And uh, I definitely felt bad for him during that period of time. Um, just seeing that happen. He managed to bring it back, which is good. It's good to see that he uh, he managed to bring it back. And now Face Clan seems to be doing pretty well, right? He seems to be doing relatively well on YouTube. They have all these new members like um, I think it's Fate, like Lacey, Ronaldo. And I kind of like those guys. I kind of like that new crop of younger Twitch streamers. He also had a whole drama back in the day with Jake Paul that was pretty funny where I think Jake Paul falsely accused him of like punching his assistant in the head or something. Something to that level. At some point. Eventually, trick shotting started to die out. So they started doing more videos that primarily focused on entertainment. Because of the new focus on content creation, we got FaZe members like FaZe Rug, Adapt, Apex, and a whole bunch of other members who were pulling in millions of views each. This was especially true once they formed the FaZe House, which became one of the most well-known content houses to ever exist on youtube they did all kinds of different stuff and they even had their own esports team overall though they were the biggest most successful gaming clan to ever exist it seemed like they were on the top of the world at one point but things started to go downhill after already moving away from call of duty content which people weren't very happy with a lot of the main phase members started to shift their focus from content creation to turning phase into like a full-on money-making business yeah this is this wasn't gonna work man i mean sometimes it makes sense to you know, corporatize your whole thing and try to make it more of a more of a quote unquote grift. Like if you want to make money, I have respect for that. But at the same time, like the entire point of Face Clan was the personalities. It was these gaming personalities that were uh, you know, having fun together. Watching Phase back in the day, you know, I have I have made a video about Face Clan, so I do understand the appeal of the content a bit. It was essentially like just watching a bunch of young guys play games together, live in a house, fuck around, eat Cheetos you know, get excited for the new COD. They felt very relatable. But at some point, they became very unrelatable because they were like, we're business now. We're going to do suits stuff. We're going to... I think they sold FaZe Clan to all these corporate suits. And then those corporate suits ended up making all these dumbass decisions, like paying Snoop Dogg like hundreds of thousands of dollars to wear like a fucking FaZe uh, necklace or something. They're like, he's Snoop... He's FaZe Snoop now. It just destroys... It just completely destroys the brand, you know? And now they've had to... They've kind of brought it back a little bit with all these new... With all these new talents. But definitely that was a that was a bad direction to take it at that point in time. Why is every content house destined to fall apart? I mean, I, I, I don't think FaZe Clan, you know, with the content house fell apart in the way that you're talking about. But I mean, if you put like six to 10, 20 something year olds who are making millions of dollars a year in one house and they're living with each other. I think it kind of makes sense why it would fall apart. Firstly, you're living and breathing content all day. You get off of your YouTube channel, you're done for the day, and then you go hang out with other content creators, so you just start to fucking hate these people because you can't fucking not look at them. You're living away from your family. You're not hanging out with anybody that's not doing content. All your friends are related to the content. You're going to grow to hate it if you if it's all you live and breathe every single day. And then on top of that, you have all these like egos and... Um, you have all these intermingling priorities, you know, in that house that are just going to, you know, cause a lot of issues. And then also with a bunch of 20 year olds in one house who are bringing girls over and having parties, you know, something's bound to happen where someone gets accused of something. It's just a terrible, just a terrible recipe for disaster. You know, I would, I would never do a content house.
business. At this point, they were getting literally tens of millions of dollars worth of investments by other companies. By the time Fortnite had become popular, there was a whole new set of phase content creators. While most of the older members who were once at the top kind of fell off, it did not help at all that some of the members started getting into some pretty bad crypto scams. And this caused quite a few members to get kicked and suspended from the team. By this point, most people realized that phase was selling out. The content wasn't as entertaining and they would get these huge celebrities to quote unquote join phase, even though they did not know a single thing about what was going on like how the fuck did they get snoop dogg to join face clan what on fucking earth does he know about a lot of money a lot of money because they thought the face clan was going to be like an international global brand where they're just gonna be able to do anything it's like face clan is it's just an idea it's not about gaming it's about clothing it's about deodorant it's about we're gonna do face clan keychains and face clan fucking diapers and face clan condoms it's like man that's just not what it's about you have to if you grow a brand in that way you have to have you know, making money is important, but you have to have some respect for what the brand is about in the first place, for sure. What about pro gaming? Watch out, it's f***ing Hornets! What the f*** is that, Locust? They f***ing got all over me! What the f*** is this? Oh... Things got even worse when former members of their own team would publicly speak out against what FaZe has become, saying that they've become too corporate, which was definitely facts. Even FaZe Tifu at the time had sued them for exploiting him, which is kind of crazy. They had gone from being valued at $1 billion to eventually selling it out for just $17 million. I wish they made FaZe Clan deodorant. We're probably like Monster Energy or Energy Drink flavored. <laughs> just walking around with a FaZe deodorant smelling like Asmongold's basement. Face Clan was at the lowest point that had ever been at reputation wise and it was not looking good until earlier this year when everything took a complete turn. Out of nowhere, Face had released a tweet with the caption control alt delete where they announced that they were kicking out basically half of the entire team. Crypto scams aren't even that big of a deal. If you're dumb enough to fall for them, you deserve to lose your money. Learn the hard way or don't learn at all. Look, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, you have to understand that not everybody is as informed about crypto or the, like the inner workings of these scams as you are. A lot of the people that invest in this shit are average people who just see a content creator that they like and they implicitly trust them because they have no reason not to. So the content creator promotes a rug pull, people buy into it, and it ends up fucking them over financially. It's okay to criticize people's people for being too naive and too vulnerable and trusting YouTubers. I think that's probably a bad idea in general, you know? to just inherently trust someone just because you watch them online but at the same time that doesn't mean you can't criticize the people who are running the scams in the first place in rebooting phase as a whole there was only a handful of members left and everything would change when they announced the four new members that would become the face of the new phase clan this would be black boy max jason silky and lacy in addition to stable renato and your rage who was already a part of the team now this was pretty controversial and not everyone loved this because they were like wait a minute what are these random streamers doing on a pro gaming team but they just weren't seeing the vision soon after after these streamers were yeah they weren't because the vision is the thing is the thing that made face clan good was not that they're all so good at video games the thing that made face clan good was the personalities interacting you know there could have been somebody who was horrible at gaming but if they were really funny and good at interacting with like phase banks and phase rug and phase rain they're going to be really popular and that's what really matters it's not about the thing is like people who are really good at games tend to fall off tend to not be popular anymore because if they're not good at that game anymore or if that game falls off they're going to get fucking shit on brutally but if they're popular because of their personality, then they're going to maintain that audience for a long time. They're going to have a much longer career. Would you review bad life hack videos? I already have done that actually on this channel with uh, PowMD. Also, have you seen the Preston Plays Egregious Scam Minecraft servers? Look them up, Mr. Epic. He does good vids. I haven't seen that. Preston Plays. I know who the Mr. Epic is. Preston Plays $25 million illegal Minecraft scam. What the fuck? I've never even heard of this. I'm not, I don't know a lot about Preston Plays, but I'll put that on my list of stuff. The thing is, for someone who uh, I don't even know what the situation is there, so I don't want to preemptively make an allegation, but what I will say is that for a lot of people who have, like, child audiences, they're going to be able to get away with a lot of shit that normally adult YouTubers wouldn't be able to because the audience is just way too young to even understand what's going on, and they'll relentlessly defend them or just not care because they don't even understand the severity of the situation, you know? I need to stop saying you know. I know. You know. We know. We all know would rise to become some of the top streamers of today so i think it's safe to say that the rebrand was pretty successful as far as the og members phase rain had struggled with addiction and mental health problems for a while now but luckily it seems like he's doing better now phase blaziken actually started selling his own caffeinated chocolate snacks and last i've heard it's apparently doing pretty good phase rug went from somehow being a call of duty trick shotter to one of the biggest channels on the entirety of youtube so as of now it seems like phase is leaving off on a pretty solid note arguably one of the most famous and loved channels of all time 
in YouTube gaming history has got to be Vanoss Gaming. In fact, it's not just Vanoss himself, but his entire YouTube friend group. Sadly though, not everything went well between them. Vanoss started his channel back in September of 2011, and from the very first video, he was already making solid videos, which isn't really common. This caused his channel to skyrocket, and he would make a lot of these trolling or funny moments videos, which by the way was some of the most peak content that has ever they were like, from what I know about them, they're like the original Misfits, right? I didn't watch a ton of the Misfits, like Swagger Souls and um, Fitz and, and all those guys, you know, people like that. I wasn't super into them, but I know enough about them that I think that they're kind of like, there's some parody there. Parody meaning P-A-R-I-T-Y, not parody, as in satire. Because they kind of were just like a group of friends who were pretty edgy. They did, you know, funny content together. And they kind of never lost that vision. I think they're still edgy to this day. Just the other day, I got some video on my recommended that was like compilation of, of Vanos gaming members or whatever you want to call them saying the N-word. And I watched it and it was it was funny. It was good. But I never really got into um I never really got into them. You know. Honestly, I kind of regret it. I kind of wasn't on that whole wave of watching like whenever the Misfits blew up or when like the S P Live guys like Jay Schlatt and people like that blew up. I didn't really care about it. I never really gave a shit. I was just like, whatever, it's, you know, PG-13 YouTube. I was off of that at the time. I was like, I'm making the real content. But looking back, those guys, it was pretty impressive what they were doing. I actually, I've been watching Jay Schlatt recently, and I actually like the content. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And for a while, I was kind of in this mindset where I was like, oh, he's like safe, edgy, whatever. But I've been watching, because I just didn't watch the shit. But I was watching it recently, and I was like, Jay Schlatt's actually pretty funny. You know, I like the content. It's totally watchable. Ever touch YouTube? The stove is broken. Wait a minute. I, I see it <laughs> 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 Along the way, while he was growing his channel, he started picking up people and building the Vanos crew. He continued to post videos about popular games at the time, like Gmod and GTA 5, and things were going pretty well, you could say. With his channel reaching tens of millions of subscribers, damn, nine, 26 million, bro. 26 million subs? I didn't know he got that big. I thought he had like 4 mil. I didn't know he was that fucking famous. Jesus. Even including all the other people in the crew who he made videos with. However, things unfortunately started to fall apart. Some of the members would simply just stop being active on their channels or even just stop playing with the crew at all. While one of them in particular had gotten himself into some pretty crazy drama. Mini Lad was one of Wait. the biggest members in the crew and he unfortunately got- Was Mini Lad a part of Vanna? I didn't know that he was a part of that group. I thought Mini Lab was like a kids content creator, like Lion Maker. I didn't know he was a part of that whole scene. I didn't. This is new lore for me. It was some not so good allegations. This included inappropriate actions that he had with some underage fans, where he often uses mental health issues to manipulate some of these girls into some pretty predatorial conversations. Now, unlike a lot of YouTubers who get exposed for accusations like this, he actually admitted to these, saying that he needs therapy. I hope that he goes to therapy. After the situation, he had no affiliation with the rest of the crew from that point on, but they would still crack a few jokes about him. Purchase Minecraft, record yeah. some videos, yeah. get some subscribers. Yeah. Talk to little kids. Have <laughs> <laughs> yes. Himself, yes. He isn't pulling in views like he used to, but he's still getting. Did you make a video on him? Yeah, but you gotta remember, dude. I've made so many f videos. I've made like hundreds of videos. I don't remember a lot of the lore. Also, I don't think I made a video just about Mini Lad. He, I think he was in one of the like quote unquote degenerate videos. I don't think I actually made a video just about Mini Lad though, from my memory. In a decent amount, so it's good to see that he hasn't completely fallen off the face of the earth. I can't lie though, it still is a little bit bittersweet. You know, all of a sudden it's not just about having a good time with my friends. Like I'm thinking about all these other things and how I'm going to make this video be like the great return to Call of Duty in the big moment where people get to see something that reminds them of the past and I just know that's not possible the only reason I was kind of okay at Call of Duty back in the day was because I played it so often and I also had a gaming headset when most people did not I don't have any natural skill I fucking suck at pretty much most things in life honestly for a while he was actually working on music under another alias but he hasn't dropped anything within the past few years overall though he has been really consistent with making videos and luckily he still makes them with a lot of the people from back in the day there has been thousands of OG gaming youtubers who I'm sure many of y'all have watched I do think it's important to mention though that just because someone's channel isn't getting as many views as they used to that does not mean their channel is a failure once you're making the same videos for over a decade you're going to have to constantly adapt to the new way of youtube and understandably not everyone wants to do that the fact that these youtubers had reached a level of success that they already did is already a huge accomplishment and many of them are probably going to be set for life, even if they just quit making videos forever but yeah let me know what y'all's favorite og it's definitely really impressive. Anytime somebody manages to like even maintain 10% of their audience after they blow up to the level of someone like Sky or Vanos, I'm really impressed by that. I'm really, really impressed. Because realistically, 
you know, it's easy to say like, oh, they fell off, they fell off, they don't get the views they used to, but it's kind of like the same feeling I have when I see like an artist who makes a really cool album, but then the subsequent albums aren't as good or the fan base doesn't like it or it's just not exactly the kind of content or the kind of music people liked. It's like, you know, I get that they, they quote unquote fell off, but realistically, it's so hard to even make one album that is universally loved and respected and gets that much attention, you know? It's really, really tough to do that. It's so hard to be one of the guys that is one of the biggest gaming YouTubers in the world. So the fact they ever achieved that in the first place just makes it be like, all right, whatever, man. You know, they quote unquote fell off, whatever. The fact they even achieved that zeitgeist in the first place is really impressive. Put some respect in their name. Like a lot of the bands that I like, like um, for example, A Day to Remember, you know, people like their quote unquote easy core stuff a lot. They're like a band that is kind of a combination of pop punk and, um, or was in their peak, a combination of pop punk and then like metalcore basically. And that co specific combination, that kind of sound, that music they made was really loved. And when they distance themselves from that, a lot of people are like, oh, just go back to making the old shit. Go back to making the old shit. Do the old shit. They fell off them. Them. They fucking suck, right? And it's like, well, in the first place, it's really hard to even get to any level where you're actually successful in any kind of music genre. So the fact they did it in the first place is really impressive. But past that point, I think it's okay to move away from that because you don't just want to make the same album over and over again. You, you don't want to do that. That's that, that would suck. That would be boring creatively. And if you do do that, you're going to be trapped by it. You know, every album you make within the same exact genre is going to really hurt you in the long term because you're only going to be, you're going to pigeonhole yourself to the point where the audience is only there for that. And if you deviate from it at all, it's super fucking hard. Like a day to remember, they had this one really big album, Homesick, that was like the biggest album of their career, sold a ton of copies. Even recently, I saw some article about how their their album sold 20,000 physical copies in like one week and it, their Homesick was back on the charts, which is really cool, right? But then after that, they did um, What Separates Me From You, which is kind of in the same vein, still that combination, but slightly more in the pop punk direction. And then they had another album that was Common Courtesy, which is a great album and I really like it. But I feel like in the, in the long term, making three albums with a relatively similar sound kind of hurt them because the audience was uh, the, the audience grew to expect only that rather than expect a new change every album. Versus a band like Bring Me the Horizon, every single album is a departure from the last. The fans that like the last album immediately hate it, but then they accumulate a new audience at the point now where Bring Me the Horizon can release you know, an album in almost any genre they want. And they're still going to be successful off of it. They're still going to get an audience for that. People are still going to listen to them because they were constantly defying expectations every single album. And there's nothing wrong with doing the same kind of thing creatively if you really get a lot out of that, if you want to have the same sound. Like, you know, another band that I like a lot is Breaking Benjamin. They did the same, you know, sound for, you know, I'd say relatively speaking, it's been a very similar sound since the album Phobia, which is the one that really put them on the map in a huge way. And it's okay if they really like that. But if you want to depart from that, it, it can be very difficult. Bring Me the Horizon's album with Mick Gordon was sick. Did they do one with him? I know he works on a lot of projects. They peaked in Halo 2. Well, I, I mean, the song they made, Blow Me Away, was really great, but that wasn't, um, that's not even close to their most popular song. It is a great song, though. I love that. That era before, before Phobia, they had more of a, uh, they were almost like sounding like Tool. They were very inspired by Tool on the, the second album, especially. What is it? Uh, the one with So Cold on it, We Are Not Alone, I think is the album name. That album had almost a Tool feel to it. It was clearly inspired by like Tool and Corn and shit like that. And then they kind of went for a more kind of mainstream quote unquote butt rock thing but still i think breaking benjamin has some of the most memorable songs from that era and some of the best songwriting even comparison to like three days grace it just wasn't nearly as corny you know not to say i don't like three days grace